Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou School Boys Varsity Tennis Team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my books, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, and it's about inspiration, welcoming adversity, and building a superior culture of excellence. My special guest today is our superstar comedian from Hawaii, who is selling out shows many places he goes. He is Tamua Tuine, and today we are going beyond comedy. Hey, Tamua, welcome to Beyond the Lines. Hey, what's up, Rusty? Thank you for having me, man. I'm so honored to be here. <laughs> Tamua, today is my 250th episode. And I am super excited to have you as my guest today. Oh, 250. That's an awesome number. Thank you. Thank you. Now, yeah. Tamua, while you attended Punahou School, I was there as the head boys varsity tennis coach. And you were playing football. Um, and I want to ask you, what were some of the things that you enjoyed uh, playing football in high school? That's right. Uh, that's true. Yeah, I graduated 2014. Um, and uh football was my passion you know I come from a big football family so I kind of just you know went right into it from since I was since I was a small kid um I, I enjoyed put I, I've been there from uh ninth grade on ninth grade to senior year and I had a uh, Kaliane as a, my head coach and it was just fun you know just being around being around the boys um I learned uh just a lot of hard work uh working ethic uh, integrity, you know, discipline. And I think I use a lot of those those qualities I learned at Punahou um, in my career today. And uh, that's just coming from an a athlete's background point of view, you know. But um, I really enjoyed Punahou. People ask me, oh, was Punahou, you know, tough, the, the education-wise? Because I, I came from a, a public school, uh, elementary and middle school, and then high school I went to Punahou. But honestly, it, it, it wasn't that hard, <laughs> maybe because I was taking easy classes. But um uh, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I hope my kids get to go there, my future kids. And uh, I think it's the best school in the world. <laughs> well, Tamua, you know, I applied to Punahou. I didn't get in. I went to Never Damien. So, you know, Damien. Just, oh. just so happened I was the head coach there for 22 years. But Tamua, after you graduated Punahou, you went to University of Hawaii and you played football there. And your dad and your uncle uh, played in the NFL. Now, right. did you have hopes of playing in the NFL after playing college football? That was the dream, you know. Like I said, my so my dad played for the Detroit Lions. You know, my uncle played for the Dallas Cowboys. Um, a lot of people know him more, uh, Mark Tuine. He played like 15 years, won three Super Bowls, two Pro Bowls. Um, they're, and they're giants, you know, they're both like 6'5", you know, and then there's me, 5'8". But um, <laughs> I'm still waiting for my growth spurt. Hopefully next week, Thursday, it'll come in. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I went to UH to play football. Um, actually, I never played football. I just went practice football. I was only on the practice team. Um, <laughs> but I only got – I was like fifth string. The only time I got in the game is when we were winning by 45 points. But that never happened in 45 years. So uh, <laughs> it was tough, but uh, but yeah, I mean that was always the dream was to become an NFL football player like my dad, like my uncle, um, and that's probably one of the main reasons why I went to UH. You know, I could have easily um, went to a, a smaller division school like a D two or D three. I was getting uh, highly recruited out of out of high school by them, and I probably would have way more playing time. But I wanted to stay home and follow in my dad's footsteps. Uh, because he went to uh, University of Hawaii as well. And he wore number 88, and that's why I wore number 88 in honor of him. Um, but, yeah, that was the dream. But uh, it never happened, you know. I never <laughs> I, I never grow. I only grew wide. I only grew wider. Um, but that's actually how I found um, my career today was because I took a stand-up comedy class at UH. And it's funny how how things happen, you know, and everything happens for a reason. If I didn't go to UH, I don't think I would ever become a comedian, you know, it, because I don't know any college that offers stand-up comedy classes, and they don't even offer it anymore at UH. But I just so happened to be there at that right time to take that class. Um, 
it, it was it was my favorite class. I mean, I mean, that's the only thing I use now, right? It's just from that class. Uh, but we only had four people in the class. That's a fun fact. We almost had to cancel the class. We had to beg some people to stay in the class to keep it going. But uh, but yeah, it was it was it was fun. Um, I remember. I'm trying to remember the teacher's name. Um, Nick something was just some some mainland guy um, teaching teaching comedy, and I took the class just to get an easy A, and uh, just for fun, you know. And my my teammate of mine, Hunter Hughes. Uh, we just, I asked him, I was like, oh, do you want to take this class just to, you know, play around? And we took it and me not expecting, I didn't know that you had to perform uh, at open mics throughout the semester. That was part of the, the criteria of the class. So you had to go to like three open mics. And I was like, as soon as I signed up, I was like, oh, I don't know if I, if I want to do this. I didn't know I had to perform. I thought we were just watching stand up comedy specials and maybe learning about joke formulas or, or something. But but I ended up staying staying in, and I ended up enjoying it. Um, I got an A, got an A plus actually in that class. Thank God, right? And and I never forget our final exam. We had to perform um, ten full minutes in front of a live audience. At uh, it was at Anna O'Brien's, which is a, a Irish pub bar right by University of Hawaii. Um, Jose Dynamite, if you guys know who he is, he's a local comedian and a comedy promoter here in Hawaii. He was running the event. That's his spot that he has weekly shows. And he saw me there. He, I did my 10 minutes. Absolutely killed. You know, the whole football team showed up. You know, some, some of my, my family came. And he invited me again to come back, Jose, to do, like, I think it was open for um, Paul Ogata, um, another former uh, comedian that lived in Hawaii. But he still, he still does comedy in the mainland. And I was nervous. I was like, okay, yeah, I'll do it. And then I just kept going, kept going. And I started, um, doing some stuff with Augie T a little bit and it's been about uh six years of doing stand-up comedy and if it wasn't for that class if it wasn't for going to UH you know and following my dreams that's that's the message I like to give to to kids and the youth is that it's okay if a door closes you know you know there's going to be another door right on right down the road opening up again and everything happens for a reason you learn lessons you know I take all the stuff that I learned from football from my dad and my uncle and all the years at, at Punahou, at UH, you know, and I try to use it in my career today. But, um, yeah, if it wasn't for UH, I don't think I would have been a comedian. See, thank God for UH and, and for Tamua. <laughs> Since then, now, I mean, you've been selling out shows on the mainland. I mean, how does that make you feel to be selling out shows now? It, it uh it's it's awesome it's it's like it's an like amazing feeling um I, I don't really like realize it till i look back like how you're saying now like wow i really sold out you know six shows in in tacoma washington you know i never would have thought i would i'd be up there doing comedy um because i only started recently touring um since last year i did a little you know a little soft tour um i kind of hit like uh all the local spots that would have um a lot of my fans there i did a little poll on social media and i found out where the people are um and it, it was cool I, we had some good shows there but this year I, it kind of i kind of took off even more um i'm also with a with an agency this year i'm with a caa creative artists agency um they're a big agency in comedy and music so they're just putting me all over the place like they even got me playing in, in chicago at the end of the year and i don't know anybody in chicago so i don't i don't, I don't know how it's gonna go so we'll see what happens but um, it's definitely it, uh, a good feeling knowing that I can sell out and do Hawaii comedy in the mainland. Um, people don't realize that us Hawaii people, we're all over the world, you know. Um, it, it's crazy. Like, even, like, in the Tacoma, that was the most recent show I did. And there were so many people. I would say, like, so we sold out six shows. That's over, like, about 1,700 people total. And um, it's, it's it's cool to see that. And And it's a good strategy, too, because... Yes, there's a lot of Hawaii people, but it's not all Hawaii people. Like, they would bring their friends, like, oh, check out this guy. Check people that don't know me, you know. So my fan base is growing, and that's the goal is to, to just grow. And um, I'm just thankful that I can do that. Well, Tamu, I, I'm so proud of you. I mean, and I know all of Hawaii is proud of you with your uh, stardom. I mean, in such a relatively short period of time. And Tamu, what would you say is the funniest thing that you've seen at one of your shows um 
funniest thing. There's a lot of things that happen. I mean, uh, just let's see. One, uh, I wouldn't say it's the funniest, but like the fire alarm went off one time, um, and I don't know what if someone pulled it or it's just a, a dud or something. But that was cool to kind of um, have me riff off of that, you know, because it just er, 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 the whole time, you know, for a good like three minutes, you know. So I'd have to just run with that just make sure okay nobody leave it's just a fake alarm okay you know so that's a, that's like a challenge i would have to i would have to deal with that kind of obstacle um i had like a few fights break out but um just drunk people you know <laughs> uh in those situations you try not to you know bring more attention to that so i i, I like to i love to talk with the crowd you know and pick on things and you know addressing the elephant in the room uh, but if something like that, I try to like just let the security handle it, and I don't want to make it escalate even more. Um, another thing, I I seen someone fall down <laughs> when they try to sit on the chair. I guess they missed the chair and just ah. um, that too. I, I didn't want to bring attention to that, but that, just to myself, I'm like, oh, that's that's pretty funny, you know. But and also just like talking with people. I mean, you never know like what what's gonna happen at a comedy show, and like the the things people say or the things like stories of how these this couple met or what this guy does for a living it's just it's just hilarious and the way they the way they say it it's almost like you can't make that up you know like the jokes right itself and the more shows you do the more easier it gets um it's called crowd work in uh in the comedies you know terminology and uh yeah you just it's just fun to just be with the crowd and and the the great the great thing that i love about comedy is that every show is different you know, you never know what's going to happen. And, um, yeah, that could either hurt you or make you better, you know? So uh, that's, that's fun. Well, Tamua, it's clear that comedy is your passion. I mean, this is definitely your purpose. I mean, you were meant to do this. I mean, it is so clear to see. And how would you describe or explain your comedy style? Um, I would say it's definitely observational. Um, it's kind of like an exaggerated version of myself of what I go through on the everyday basis. That's what I try to portray on stage is just, uh, I want people to watch me, whether it's my skits on social media or on stage, I want them to watch me. And then I want it to click in their mind and be like, I know who that, I know that guy, you know, that joke he just did reminded me of my dad, you know, I, or, or that skit. Oh, that, that looks like that guy I saw at Home Depot the other day. You know, so I, familiarity and relativity, I want everything to be relative. Um, that's the main goal. Um, and I like to just, be, you know, I'm, I'm kind of witty on stage. I like to play around with some wor word play. And a lot of it is improv, too, on the spot. Um, family friendly, too. Clean. Uh, I keep it clean. Made that decision from the beginning um, based on um, Augie T and Andy Bumatai. Uh, they told me if you want to make it big in Hawaii, you got to stay clean. And they're definitely local comedy legends that I always looked up to. Um, but yeah, observational, clean, fun. Um, you're just going to have an overall good time. So, Tamua, I, I mean, I love it because your audience, like you said, I mean, it's family friendly. You have young people, you got old people. I mean, everybody can go to your shows. And Tumua, I, I like when you talk about you're kind of educating all of us about pigeon and the two words, the kind and can, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you really, yeah, that's, that actually happened because, you know, um, being on the UH football team, we have a lot of people from the mainland, you know, and, and they, they try to adapt to the local culture. And a lot of them try to speak pigeon. So I just kind of told them like, yeah, you just, just got to say the kind and can and just use it in the correct cadence. And whatever you're talking about, gonna make sense. Can, bro, can, <laughs> you know. So uh, th those those are fun to talk about. And if no can, no can, right? No can, no can. If can, can. If no can, bottles. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Recycle. <laughs> Recycle. Yeah. <laughs> Find a can. <laughs> Tamua, I was cracking up watching you do that whole skit. I mean, that is that that is hilarious. And you know, like you said earlier, I mean, you're you love doing the improv. I mean, you're so 
you're you're so gifted. It's such an impressive thing to watch you on stage doing your impromptu situations. I mean, and you said earlier, it's like sometimes it just writes itself, right? It just writes itself. Sometimes um, it doesn't work too. You know, if you come to my live shows, maybe this person is just, you know, not as entertaining or he's not as interesting or he's not giving me any any good answers or he's shy or whatever. Then I'll just I'll just move on. But I was I was like deathly afraid of of talking to the crowd at first. Before I would just you know run through my jokes, run through my material like a robot. And then as the years went on, I got more relaxed. You know, because um, that's the main thing in comedy. You want to feel like it, ha- it. First of all, it has to be live. You know, I did I did Zoom comedy like maybe one or two shows during the pandemic, and it doesn't it doesn't work. You know, you gotta, you gotta, cause you could be talking, 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 and uh, you know, I never pay my Wi-Fi frozen. That's why, but, <laughs> but in comedy, you gotta have that live interaction, and it's the only profession where you get instant feedback. You know, comedy videos, comedy movies, you can take multiple takes, multiple shots. You know, you can critique it, but stand-up comedy, you know, instantly if that joke hits or not. It's kind of like jazz. You just on the flow and as the years gone by of me doing it a lot you know almost every week um i got better at it you know and i realize uh i can be more relaxed on stage you know i can i can get involved with the crowd and but not too much to make make them take over the show you know just just a little bit because they love they love being part of the show they love uh they love those me being spontaneous you know that's what gets big laughs even if it's a small joke they would laugh real hard because they know that i didn't prepare that and that just happened in the moment and all of us witness it together so that's what everyone loves about the crowd work and i try to try to do that and sometimes it doesn't work sometimes it does but the more you do it the more it works well it, it seems to be working a whole lot when i'm watching <laughs> your shows and and tamua you've been doing a lot of short skit videos and posting it on social media and those are hilarious i mean you're you're expanding your reach uh through social media i mean that that one where you said i mean everybody on Kauai knows everybody right yeah 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 <laughs> that's right um funny thing is i never really was into those um instagram skits or social media skits because uh i didn't think that was like you know a comedian i wanted to be a real comedian just stand up comedy um but when the pandemic hit that's when uh my whole you know game plan shifted uh all everything was closed you couldn't do any live entertainment uh i had a at that time during the pandemic i had a a, a monthly show at koolau golf course at honey's restaurant every second fridays of the month i would have a headlining show and i would get a good amount of people coming in a lot of family you know a lot of friends on the east side of the island and i was happy that i got that gig and that shut down the whole Koala golf course shut down because of covid and i was just at home thinking like okay what am i what am i gonna do am i just not gonna do comedy anymore i don't know how long this whole lockdown is gonna last you know but then some of my friends said oh you you should post some of these stuff on on social media and i was like nah i don't wanna i don't wanna do that no one's gonna no one's gonna watch it you know but i did i never forget i did um my first video i put up was this um toilet paper drug dealer I was like dealing, (laughs) acting like a drug dealer, but dealing toilet paper because that was a a hot topic at the time was the toilet paper. And the the day I posted it, it went on the news, you know, all the news stations, they they reposted it. And I I was like, okay, I guess this is what the local people want. And then it was like every week I would pump out at least one or two videos of like these job profession skits, you know, like whether it's construction or working at Lowe's. you know, being a barber, I, I'll, I'll just pump these out. And, and my following grew and grew and grew. And um, when I finally had the green light to do live shows again, I did at Blue Note, which is uh, this jazz club in town. Um, I put up two shows and then it instantly sold out. And that never did happen for me. And I was like, oh, like, what, what do we what do we do now? And people were like, well, you just, just add another show. So we added another show, it sold out, add another show, sold out. And I ended up selling out like 18 shows at Blue Note, um, which was like three consecutive weekends, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, two shows each night for three weeks straight. And and that was all because of social media and all because of the skits. So now I just do two and two. Like I just, there's my stand-up side, 
and my skit side and I try to push everything towards my stand up because nothing can beat live shows but I really enjoy making these uh Instagram skits and it wouldn't have happened uh if the the pandemic didn't happen you know so I'm I'm blessed with that that's the thing I like to preach too is that people you know like you mentioned earlier off camera with like mental health is a big thing and I think uh like the whole covid thing kind of like triggered a lot of people but you can look at it in a positive or a negative way you know so I kind of just I have a lot of time on my hands so I'm just going to make videos online you know and see what happens so always look at things in a positive way well Tamua I mean you are so creative I mean I watched your short uh, video skit of the local TSA agent being so <laughs> serious I mean, one of my favorite ones. I'm, <laughs> oh, I'm cracking up but Man, how do you come up with all these uh, ideas? Um, a lot of it is just experiences, you know, like, I mean, like the TSA one, I travel a lot, you know, so I, I, I seen what happens, you know, they're very angry, yelling at you, you know, make sure your laptop is out of your bag, you know, uh, so that, that was fun to shoot. And a lot of it is like friends too and family, you know, I'll run the idea by them and they'll give me feedback. And they'll tell me to maybe use this or you got to talk about that. Or I'll call people that that actually work like in the TSA. You know, I'll call people that actually work in that job profession and say, okay, what's what's the lingo around here? You know, because I want people to I want people to watch it and the general public to laugh at it. But I also want like TSA agents or people who are in that field to be like, okay, how does he know like this, this type of, you know, how does he know that the, all these terminology? But. Um, that brings back what I said earlier, and uh, everything got to be relative, everybody got to be relatable, you know, that's the main thing. If they can relate to this, it's going to be fun. Well, Tamua, you're brilliant, and uh, I want to I wanna talk with you about some of the concepts in my books. Um, one of the concepts is welcoming adversity, overcoming obstacles, and, you know, it's it's a mindset. You know, we can choose to look at things um, is in a positive way, we can choose to look at things in a negative way. I mean, I always say that life happens for you versus life happens to you. What are your thoughts about that? And what are what's some obstacles that you had to overcome? Um, that goes back to what I said, like everything happens for a reason. I take every obstacle that I that comes my way as as a lesson, you know. Um, a big one is the, the pandemic that I just mentioned. Um Another one would be, uh, I'd say when I, I, so I don't really want to talk about this too much, but I had a previous manager uh, when I first started, but I ended up getting rid of him um, just so that I can, you know, work on myself more and just, just want to go separate ways. And that was kind of tough for me to make that decision. And then when I did that, I kind of got a new agency, which was CAA, and now things are a lot better as well. Um, that's one obstacle as well. Um, that's pretty much, yeah, I don't know. That's the two big, big obstacles. But I mean, you also get like maybe um, some cities like ticket sales are not doing as well, you know, and you always wonder like, oh, why, you know, why, why are they not selling? You know, do they not know who I am? Um, next thing you know, maybe this maybe just because the timing is off or you got to do more, more advertising. Um, and Another thing that I like to tell people is don't compare yourself to others, you know, um, which is big in the entertainment industry because you want to, if you look at someone like another comedian, you're like, okay, why does this guy have a Netflix special? You know, what, why, why not me? You know, but you can't think like that. You got to just kind of say like, yeah, why not me? You know, <laughs> you got to put the comma somewhere else. Like, why well, it can be me, you know, can, always can. And I, I try to look at it as motivation. I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not jealous of anybody. You know, if someone like another local comedian, you know, surpasses me or makes it bigger than me, I'm going to congratulate him, you know, because uh, it's better to, to, you know, work together and bring people up instead of pushing people down. So um, even younger comics come up to me and they ask me for advice. I try my best to help them out. Um, but yeah, overcoming obstacles, you got to just, I, I never read your book, but I'm guessing just, just overcome it and just have a, you know, strict tunnel vision mindset and try not to let it bother you too much because in the end, the obstacles that you overcome will help you, you know, and it makes you who you are. Um, I definitely believe that. Another, yeah, another big obstacle was realizing that I'm not going to play football. You know, I touched on it 
earlier because football was my was my life. That's what I did since I was a little kid. And to finally give that up was uh, was tough for me, you know. And then I came into comedy, realized that. Um, oh, yeah, another obstacle. Um, when I first started doing comedy, I was working down at the docks at Hawaii Stevedores, and which is a amazing job. Um, if you're from Hawaii, everybody wants that job, you know. So I was working there, and I was doing comedy at the same time. And I ended up missing work because I'd have to do this gig here. But that's when I was just doing shows here in Hawaii. And then my, my dad works at the docks too. So we had a long talk and I told him that I'm going to have to just, I want to just do comedy, you know? And it, it was tough on him because uh, he got me in, in the job and, uh, you know, everybody want, wants that job. And it looks kind of bad that I'm just leaving that job just to do comedy, you know? Like, what, you're going to do comedy? You can make so much money at this job. Why, why are you doing comedy? Um, but I just stuck to my, you know, my, my roots, what I believed in. And turns out I'm I'm doing great right now, and who knows where where else God will take me or where the path will take me. But yeah, if you want, if you believe in something and you truly work hard, just take it. You know, and follow. Well, it. Tomua, I mean, I it's amazing how many obstacles just came out all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I'm I'm definitely gonna get you the books this week because uh, you gotta you gotta have inspiration, gotta have that mindset and. And Tamua, in what ways would you say comedy is similar to sports? Um, I, I compare it to football. It's definitely stand-up comedy. Um, if you ever played football or even a sport, tennis, I guess, as well, you know, you get that pregame jitters, you're nervous. That's kind of like just, you know, being nervous before a show. You know, you get stage fright a little bit. And it's good to be nervous. It's, it's actually bad to be not nervous. That's when you're, like, you know, too, you know, too cocky and I, I it, nervous makes you alert, you know, it makes you ready and it humbles you down. I personally believe that. So you both get that same feeling, the adrenaline rush, you know, pregame jitters in football, you get that first play, that first hit, that first tackle or that first pass or whatever. And then the, you know, the jitters goes away a little bit, just like in comedy, you're on stage. Once you tell that first joke, you hear that first laugh, you know, it kind of eases away. And then you're just back in that flow, in that zen or whatever. But yeah, definitely similar. There's a lot of similarities with, with football and comedy or sports and comedy. I mean, I both sweat. You know, both of them, I was sweating. I sweat on stage. I sweated on the field. Um, yeah, and you deal with adversity as well. Maybe, you know, maybe this topic is too sensitive for this crowd, you know. Just like football, maybe this, you know, game plan, this this type of defense is not working. Okay, I'm going to change it up. I'm going to audible. I'm not going to talk about this topic. I'm going to switch over to something else already. So it, it, it's all hand in hand. It's both performing. You know, you're sweating. It, it, it's all the same. And I, that's why I'm grateful that I have an athletic background and I learned all those qualities in sports and football and I can use it on stage. Kamua, I want to ask you one more thing before we wrap up. What, what's a big future goal of yours? A big future goal of mine um, would probably be uh, to get like this big, a big special, you know, either whether on Netflix or HBO or Showtime. Um, hopefully it comes soon. That's, that's the plan. My, my big time goal before was to sell out the Blazell Arena. And, you know, I already did that already last year, which I'm so grateful for. Um, but yeah, this time I want, I want to, you know, get a special. Um, Definitely grow my audience more, you know, which I feel like I have a pretty strong audience in the main, in, uh, sorry, in Hawaii. And the goal is to just, you know, broaden more in the, in the mainland. Um, there's that. I try not to look too far ahead. You know, I'm not like, oh, in five years, I want to be here. Ten years, I want to be here. I mean, yeah, I, I have that idea, but I don't really focus on that. I just take it day by day, month by month, year by year, you know. So, but right now, I really want to get like a big special and a big, uh, a well-known network company, whether it's Netflix or HBO or Showtime or one of those, one of those things. And hopefully that happens soon. Well, we definitely need to make that happen. And Tamua, you, um, it's so impressive. You've been building this superior culture of excellence for some years now. And it's so great to see you be successful. And yeah, we got to get all of Hawaii to have that big special to happen. And Tamua, I really want to thank you for taking time to be on the show today. Thank you so much for having me. I had, a, had an awesome time. Um, 
yeah, I can't wait to see this when it airs. You know, I'm excited. But yeah, thank you. I'm blessed and, and honored to be here. Thanks to Moa. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com. And my books are available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. I hope that Tamu and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.